This is Tamara from mooglyblog.com, and in this video, I'm going to be demonstrating how to make the Finger Chain Can Cozy, a yarn craft for kids and adults. For this craft, I used Red Heart Super Saver. There are lots of different varieties of this yarn out there. This one is an ombre, there's Fair Isle, there's the standard solids, stripes, lots to choose from, and you can absolutely pick your favorite. You will also need some sort of craft glue. This one is Beacon 3-in-1 Advanced Craft Glue. It worked really well for me. A can from your recycling or alternatively any other container that you wanted to do this treatment to, as long as it can stand up to some glue. I also like to use a bit of washi tape and some fun buttons for decoration, but these are optional. Another optional touch, oops, let me pull this one up here. You can see I just put a bit of pretty paper on the inside of this one so that when it's in use with our things in it, if I pop it in there, you'd be seeing it naturally more from this angle and it looks nice and pretty so you don't see the inside of the can. So I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate this for you today, including how to finger chain. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so step one in making the finger chain can cozy is preparing the can and paper. I've removed the label and it's nice and clean. I've also cut a piece of paper just the right size to fit inside. Actually, I stole this one from the other one, but you get the idea. You can just cut the paper, play with a little bit. Every can is a little different size. I mean, there's some standards, you know, around 14 ounces, but um, when you hold them next to each other, it turns out they can be a little different. So you'll need to sort of experiment, just cut a piece of paper, slide it in there, and see where you need to cut it off. The other thing I like to do before I get started is add a little bit of washi tape, uh, which is just a really simple decorative tape right around that top edge. Uh, this can doesn't have it as much. It was a different kind of can. It had a pull tab, but some of the cans where you've used a can opener can leave a sharp edge on the inside there. So if you take a bit of washi tape, let me see if I can find the end here. Oh, luckily this one was pretty easy to find. And if you take this and you just put it right over that edge, really carefully, all the way around, you're not going to see most of it because you can see here, it's covered up really by the yarn and the paper, but it will just help protect any little fingers who might be engaging in this craft or using the can later. So I'll go ahead and set that one aside for now, but you get the idea. Just a little bit of washi tape across the top if it, if it has a sharp edge, just to protect the fingers. Then we can set aside the can and our paper and make our finger chain. To make the finger chain for this craft, I like to hold three strands of yarn together, but you might not want to buy three skeins of yarn to make this project. And you can see here, I also wanted a little bit of variation, almost like a little bit of sky with clouds in it for this particular little scene on this can. So what I did was I got a skein of the Super Saver Ombre and I separated it into its different sections. And I'll show you how to do that here in just a moment. If you are not using an ombre or one of the other colors, you don't have to necessarily look for the color changes. With the ombre, it's nice and easy. You can actually see with this center pull skein how those color layers are just separated right there for you. So I'll demo how to dem uh, pull a skein apart here. Super Saver is great for this because it is a center pull skein and it'll be real easy. So let me show you how. All right, so if we take a skein of Super Saver, we want to make sure that the ends are free from both ends here. We've got that one from the outside end, and this one is the inside end. So this is the end we want to look at. You can see from a center pull skein here, all the Super Savers are like this, not just the ombre. They have the, the center pull skein, and that means that the uh, yarn sort of layered. As you can see here, it's easier to see with the ombre because of the color changes. If it's a solid, of course, this would all be sort of one color, but you can really see the different layers. And we're gonna use this to our advantage for this project because we want to have three strands to pull from and we don't wanna try and pull from both ends and pull in another skein. We're just going to make three skeins out of this one. So you can just pull sort of the first couple layers here, separate them out with your fingers and just slide it right on out. Make sure you're pulling from that center pull end. Slide it right on out of the skein. There we go. Might have a little bit of little bit of yarn barf there, that's okay. This here is our outside end now of this skein. So we wanna go ahead and cut that. And now we've got one skein of this made that we can set aside and pull from here in a minute. Now let's make our second one. Let's sort of eyeball it here. Maybe do three sections for this one. You want to sort of separate those out gently with your fingers if you think maybe, oh, I'm in the wrong spot. Pull it out there sort of pull towards the center since we've got some center space now. And then again, just sort of gently start pulling on that and separating it out. And before you know it here, there we are. Where's our string? There we are. There is now the outside string for this one. 
So if I cut that yarn right there and set that up here, you can see we now have, where's my end here? There, three center pull skeins made from one skein of Super Saver. So we can make this project with just one skein of yarn. And in fact, especially in the ombre size, which is a huge, uh, let me make sure I get that right, 10 ounces, you'll be able to make several of these from one skein of this yarn. So being able to pull it apart like this is really handy. So once you've got your three skeins or three strands all ready to go, then you can go ahead and start finger chaining. All right, so once you've got your three strands ready to go, you want to line up your ends so they're about the same length. Then you've got a couple of options. If you know how to slip, make a slip knot, you can start with a slip knot where you just wrap your yarn around your finger, behind the loop, and pull it through. At least that's how I do it. There are lots of different videos out there on how to slip knot. If that was confusing for you, I understand. You don't have to make a slip knot. You can also just tie a knot right around your finger. Let me see if I can do it here for you. I just tied a simple knot, as you can see, just like that. Go ahead and put your finger in there. You want the knot to be just a little bit looser than your finger, and then you can go ahead and tie another knot if you want to. The slip knot is a little fancier way of doing it, but this way it works just as well as you can see. Then, once you've got your knot and your loop on your finger, you take your three strands that you're gonna be pulling all together, and you wind them around your finger like so. Then you pull that back loop, that first one you made, up over the first one. It can be a little fiddly, but there we go. You just, just like that. That's your first chain. Then you do it again. Go over your finger, and now the back one comes over that one. Pull it down, and do it again. Over your finger, back one over the first one. And you just keep going to make as long a chain as you need. Now, to cover a can, you have to make a chain, um, definitely a few feet long. Every can's, like I say, a little bit different size and everybody's got a little different gauge and everything like that. So it'll be a little different for you. What I like to do is chain for a really long time and then I will start applying it to my can, which I'll show you how to do here in a minute. And then, um, but before I start doing that, I won't finish it off. I won't cut my yarn at all. I will just uh, keep this loop open and keep it attached so that if I need to add more chains, then I can absolutely do that. And also if I need to take some out, I can take them out easily as well. If you find that you've got too many when you get to the end here, then all you need to do is pull on the end there that's still attached to the skeins and they will come right out. So you can take out any wonky ones that way as well. Anything that didn't feel right, doesn't look right, you can always undo your work, put your finger back in that loop and just start chaining again. I also demonstrated this live on a video that is embedded in the written pattern. So you can check that out there as well for a little different perspective on this very easy technique. So as I said, just keep finger chaining until you've got a nice long finger chain and then we'll start gluing it to our can. Okay, so when you finger chained for several feet and you're ready to start gluing it to the can, take that last loop that's on your finger and pull it up nice and high. And if you have a safety pin or a stitch marker or something like that, you can put it in that loop just to make sure that it doesn't accidentally pull your stitches back out as you're gluing. Then I'm gonna go ahead and put down a paper towel here and I will pull up my can. Now, what we want to do is start at the bottom and we're just going to spiral around our can. So we're gonna start at the end, uh, let's see here, the very first end there with the knot and basically glue it around in a spiral. You want to leave a couple inches of this tail here we can go over it with the spiral, but you don't wanna to cut too close to the knot or then your loops can start coming undone. So we're just going to go around the can, around and around, let me see here. And if you'd like to, I really like to, um, if you are someone who crochets or knits, it'll be a little easier for you to see this. But if you look at the chain we've made, one side of it almost looks like knit stitches and the other side sort of has this hump here. I like to try and maintain just one side up. I like the look of this side. If you like the look of this side, it's fine. If you wanna go ahead and let it twist as you glue it on, totally up to you. But basically just work your way, let's see here, around the can. It's a little easier and less messy to do it without the glue here first to show you. And as you go around, when you get to this side here, we're just going to go right on over those ends as you glue and then begin a second layer right on, right above it. So come around again. And of course I would have trimmed those off a little bit. We just go right above it and then we can just go right on over those ends again. So as you're gluing, just keep squinching, you know, those, uh, those chains together there so they make a really nice uh, even coverage of the can and so you keep covering those ends until you get closer to the top. So let's do 
let's glue a few inches of this one together here. Now, let's see. This glue I found works really well for it because it dries quickly, but not too quickly. So I can still move my chains around a little bit as I go. And it also dries clear, which is really important for a craft like this. You don't want to add, you know, any dark colors or any contrasting colors to your project. So I'll go ahead and find my end here again. You can see I just put just one thin line of glue right there. I'm going to push up my sleeve so I don't glue myself to the project. There we are. And then, like I said, we're just going to gently lay this right on top of the glue. It's okay to kind of squish it down a little bit from on top of the yarn there. And then you can just continue to work your way around. I've already made a couple cans with this, so I'm starting to run out, but got quite a bit left here. Probably work a little better if I left it on its side. So yeah, just work your way on around. You can add as much glue as you like or as little glue as you need to, just to make sure it stays on. As I say, this stuff works pretty well. So I will go ahead and just add a dab here. And then I'm going to go ahead and pull those ends up out of the way a little bit. Like so, just let them go ahead and hang right there. Try and smooth them out a little bit. Then I will come back around and then just go right over those ends and start building my second layer like so. So you just keep going around and around and around until you get to the very top. So I will see you when we get to that point. Okay, so for the sake of time, I've sort of skipped the center of my can here so I can demo the end for you here. If you'd wound your way all the way around up to the top, you would end up with a spot about like this and hopefully a few more chains left. So what you're going to want to do is sort of figure out what's that final chain that you want to keep on there. So right about there. So what we're going to do is go ahead and pull on those ends that are still attached to our skeins of yarn here until we've got just about that last loop left there. That looks pretty good, maybe. Yeah, let's leave go. Let's go ahead and leave that one. It's always easier to tuck in a little extra than to have too little. So at this point, I'm going to pull that loop open up a little bit again. And then I'm going to go ahead and cut my yarn like so through all three strands. And then if I go ahead and pull that end all the way through, I can pull tight and that will stay secure. So now all I need to do is trim this down a little bit shorter, maybe half an inch or so, maybe an inch. We can sort of pull that out of the way and just stick a little bit of glue right there at that top final join. Let me get some more coming out here. There we go, like so. And then we can just sort of lay that right over and tuck our ends in. You can use a toothpick or a skewer or your craft scissors if you're feeling brave like I am. And just tuck those ends right underneath the last previous row there. Take your time. This glue does take a little bit of time to dry, so you've got a few minutes here. There we go. And like so, like I said, this will all be covered with other yarns. You can just sort of tuck that end right on in and it will be well hidden, especially once you've got that washi tape and pretty paper inside. So once you've got it covered, then it's time to add decorations. Okay, so once you've got your can all covered, you can kind of see on this one, here's where I began. And can we spot up here where I finished off? Maybe right about there. It looks like I tucked my ends in. Then it's time to add decorations if you want. Again, this is totally optional but it adds a fun touch. Now we're coming up on Father's Day as I film this, so I sort of chose an outdoorsy theme for this one, but there's baseball, do it yourself, football. I found all these at my local Joann's, um, just lots of fun. And of course, this isn't just for dads. You can make this for any occasion, any place you need, just a little extra storage, an extra pencil cup, um, tool cup, crayon cup, whatever you like. The kids can have a lot of fun with this. So I found all these that sort of made me think of Father's Day or sporty things. I also found these really cute ones with some uh, forest creatures. You could absolutely get maybe some brown and green yarns and make a nice little forest themed one. I also found this sparkly button at my local Joann's and it has a very different feel than these other ones. But imagine this on a can maybe covered in all white yarn or something with a little sparkle in it like Red Hard Hookah Charm. I think it would give it a very different look and could even be elegant enough for the vanity table. So you've got lots of options and different crafts that you can make with this yarn craft cozy. And that's how to make the finger chain can cozy. Like I said, it's a super fun craft to do with your kids, or you can do it yourself if you just need a little more organization in your own home. 
It's a, it's a very easy craft. You don't need any special skills other than finger chaining, which I've demonstrated for you here today. And if you didn't want to do that, you could even just braid the yarn and use it to wrap the uh, can or the box or whatever it is. It's a great craft to make with the kids from organization. It uses recycled materials. And of course, you can have a lot of fun with Red Heart Super Saver this way. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, please do let me know in the comments. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and please do subscribe to the Moogly Blog YouTube channel. It helps us out a lot and we really appreciate it. Have a great day, everybody. Thank you.